Thanks for joining us here on Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here for the second time today. I promised you I'd get to the studio. We certainly made it happen. We have an updated list of the top 10 Seattle Seahawks coaching candidates as of right now. We're going to break this down into two categories. The coaches that have a second interview lined up and then the long shots. Now, as we told you earlier today, the Seahawks will also have a new offensive coordinator in addition to a new head coach as Shane Waldron, the Seahawks offensive coordinator in 2023, has departed and accepted the same position with the Chicago Bears, which obviously means he won't be a candidate for the Seahawks head coaching job as well or stay on board as OC. So the new head coach will not only get to uh, come in and take this job, of course, but pick out their new offensive coordinator and not be forced to keep Shane Waldron around. They'll get to... Uh, assemble the staff as they see fit. And for me, I look at, especially with a lot of defensive coaches on this list of names, that the OC hire will be almost as important as the head coaching hire to get it right uh, as far as that goes for Seattle. So something to keep in mind, just because you got the head coach done, we still have a whole other thing to figure out on that OC front. Let's start with the second interview list. Dan Quinn gets a second interview with Seattle, no surprise. He's been the favorite uh, to get this job ever since it opened, the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator. He had his first interview back on January 18th uh, for the former Atlanta Falcons head coach that helped take the Falcons to the Super Bowl several years ago. And for me, I look at with Dan Quinn. We mentioned still the favorite, but not the best candidate in my opinion, of the names that we're going to talk about today or even the names that are available out there, you can do better than Dan Quinn. The thing that I see, though, is that what Dan Quinn offers, comparably speaking to the other candidates, is a familiarity, a comfort level of sorts. If the Seahawks do end up hiring Dan Quinn and John Schneider goes this route, for me it speaks a level to what are we comfortable with? What do we know about Dan Quinn that we don't know necessarily about those other coaches, that you feel like you know what you're getting one way or the other. So, 12s, I know most of you in my comment section have been very vocal you don't want Dan Quinn as your next head coach. So, here's what I want you to do. If you don't want to hire Dan Quinn, like the video, and then drop to the comment section and tell me who you want to hire instead. If you do want to hire Dan Quinn, comment and tell me you want to hire Dan Quinn. Let us know who you're leaning towards. Like the video if you don't want Dan Quinn. Tell me who you want instead. Next on the list, Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams. has done a really good job with that L.A. Rams defense over the last couple of years. Interviewed for the Seahawks position back on January 19th and has head coach experience, much like Dan Quinn does, former head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was very young the last time he was a full-time head coach, also was interim head coach for the Falcons for a bit. Things didn't go so great there. I understand that Morris has done a very good job in L.A. managing that defense, but this is the issue that I have when it comes to hiring guys for a second opportunity when they've already failed as a head coach, and I think this applies to Raheem Morris. How is he any different than when he was a 28-31 and 31 head coach. I understand he was much younger back then, but I don't know what he's done, what makes him a different coach than he was back then, to sit here and say you're not going to get the results that you got back then. I don't know personally. Maybe he has changed. But personally, I haven't seen this just progress that says this guy is a home run hire. You can't miss on him now that he's learned from his previous mistakes. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just haven't seen that at this point. Today's show is sponsored by Factor. I got to tell you, I love me some Factor meals. They're healthy, very easy to make, great for a bachelor like myself. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. 
Factors, two-minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel them fast with restaurant-quality meals all delivered right to your door. When things get hectic, Factor is flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week. Or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormills.com slash SeahawksChat50 and use code SeahawksChat50 to get 50% off. That's code SeahawksChat50 at factormills.com slash SeahawksChat50. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Factor Mills, proud partner of Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Mm-hmm, good. All right. Next on the second interview list, Mike Kafka, the offensive coordinator for the New York Football Giants. The Giants were a joke this year. They were just atrocious. Their offense was bad, too. This is a head-scratcher of why Matt Mike Kafka's on this list. Now, I get he does come from the Andy Reid coaching tree. He is credited in part with the development of Patrick Mahomes as the Chiefs quarterback coach several years ago and did a very good job as the Chiefs quarterback coach. And his first year as the Giants OC went very well. But I can't escape, in my mind, what happened last year with that Giants offense and what Mike Kafka did. In fact, um, I would say that I would sit here and look at Mike Kafka and look, just say, I, I can't escape that from my mind. I, I don't know how you can look at that Giants offense of what they produce and say, yeah, that's the guy I want to hire. It's one of those things, two plus two doesn't equal five. It equals four. I don't see where that adds up with Kafka. I get the Mahomes connection and all that, but I, I would stay away. I, I don't even know if I'd want him as my OC, to be honest. Uh, next, uh, Evero from the Carolina Panthers, the defensive coordinator. Uh, this is another one where I get it. Evero's a, a rising star of sorts. This is somebody that uh, was most people around the league gave a lot of praise for the job he did as a defensive coordinator despite all the circumstances that the Carolina Panthers went through. A coaching change, just how bad their roster was. Of all the issues facing the Carolina Panthers in 2023, the defense was not one. And I'll say this, though, and this is kind of similar to Mike Kafka and some of the other candidates we're going to talk about here. We have heard from Seahawks management from John Schneider and Jody Allen and everybody, all this and that. We care about culture, preach culture, all this. Number one thing in culture we're looking for is a winning culture. At the end of the day, Evero doesn't hasn't done a whole lot of winning. Didn't do it in Carolina. Certainly didn't do it in Denver before that. I, I'm, I'm out on that. I'm very open to the idea of bringing him to be D.C. And maybe this opens the door for the next head coach to be like, hey, this guy here, he should be your D.C., but I'm um, me skeptical as far as making him head coach. Should the Seahawks hire an offensive or defensive coach? O for offense, D for defense. Weigh in, tell me what you think. And last on the second interview list is Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator for the Las Vegas Raiders. And you look at Patrick Graham, somebody that was with the New York Football Giants, goes to the Las Vegas Raiders, interviewed back on January 17th. And the Raiders this season was a roller coaster year with the coaching change from Mike McDaniel or from uh, Josh McDaniels over to uh, Antonio Pierce. And that team was a whole different football team when they made that coaching change. But I'll say this we talk about culture and everything. I don't want anything to do with the Raiders in Seattle. That organization, all they went through and the mess and all that, I'm staying away. Now, Patrick Graham is looking for head coaching opportunities. The Raiders aren't letting him interview for D.C. jobs. They've already blocked that from happening. So this is not a situation where you're interviewing him and maybe he's an option for your next head coach to hire as D.C. To me, that is this one just doesn't add up for me when it comes to Patrick Graham. Now the long shot left. Let's start with Mike Vrabel. And what's interesting with Vrabel is we've heard the reports from Shefty and Dan Graziano and these guys that the Seahawks are reportedly very interested that they've requested an interview with Mike Vrabel. But Bueller, Bueller, we're waiting, we're waiting. Nothing's happened at this point. Now Vrabel might be enjoying himself in Cancun or something like that. Uh, you know, he hasn't taken an interview with anyone else either. But what's going on here? The Seahawks, if I'm John Schneider, if I have to fly to Cancun to get Mike Vrabel's attention, I will do so. I, I just don't understand. 
Mike Vrabel should be one of the top three candidates or even top two candidates for that matter on this list. This guy of the guys we're talking about today, I think is the best candidate of this group of, of people that we've narrowed it down to. What's the holdup here? We know they're interested, but they're already on the second round of interviews. Have they already written off Mike Vrabel and said, well, if you're not going to return our calls, we're done here? What, what's going on here? Get Mike Vrabel on the phone and get an interview going. He'd be a great fit in Seattle personally. Folks, we are your off-season headquarters here at Seahawks Today. We are quickly approaching 49,000 subscribers. The race is on to 49K, 400 subs away from reaching that milestone. We're talking about this coaching search every single day. No other YouTube channel is doing that. But we are here on Seahawks today. We're still bringing our live shows every Wednesday, daily news and rumors. Brought you two videos today. What more could you want? Subscribe now for free. You'll be glad you did. Ben Johnson, also on the list of long shots. He was a name that did get interviewed uh, by the Seahawks back on January 20th, just a couple days ago. And when we've talked about the top offensive minds, of finding an offensive coach, Ben Johnson is going to be right at the top of the list. And if you're hoping the Seahawks land a rising young offensive prodigy, if that is the cup of tea that you're wanting to drink, Ben Johnson's your guy. The other thing, though, so far hasn't gotten that second interview. That could change. Is that with Ben Johnson, he's in the middle of a conference championship. He's a little busy right now. And they were saying on the broadcast, Mike Tirico, of just how much of a difficulty it's been for him balancing, trying to do these interviews and, and trying to game plan. Obviously, he still did a pretty good job of game planning with that win against the Bucks uh, the other day. And then on top of that, you got all these other teams that are interested in Ben Johnson as well. He's going to be a head coach for somebody, but if you really want him, you're going to fight for him uh, is what it's going to take. Mike McDonald, Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator. I got to tell you, I really like Mike McDonald. Uh, the reported interest was – at the beginning of the coaching search that the Ravens wanted an interview with Mike McDonald. Hasn't happened just yet. That's why we put him on the long shot list. I think he's been the most impressive coordinator, offense or defense, either one, in all of football this year. That Ravens defense has been phenomenal. They've passed every test with flying colors this year. I think he's going to be a head coach for somebody next year. It might not be the Seattle Seahawks, but it will be somebody. And you look at what they did to shut down the Houston Texans this past week, that's on coaching. Mike McDonald's done a great job. Young guy, a lot of energy to the table. If you're going to go defense, and that seems to be what the Seahawks are looking more towards on candidates so far, Mike McDonald deserves a shot at this job. Who would be the worst coach the Seahawks could hire? Of all the names we're talking about, and there's plenty of names here, who's the guy you absolutely under no circumstance want to be the next Seahawks head coach? Way in the comments section, tell me what you think. Another name on the long shot list, Bobby Slowick, the Houston Texans offensive coordinator. The Texans saw their season come to an end on Saturday at the hands of Mike McDonald and the Baltimore Ravens. And it's been a great run for Bobby Slowick uh, this past season with the credited in large part with the development of C.J. Stroud and how well that offense has looked. He comes from the Kyle Shanahan tree. He got interviewed on the 21st. Uh, slow, impressive season. But I'll say this, okay? We talk about balancing the act of trying to do these interviews and game plan. I don't like the way the Houston Texans looked offensively against the Baltimore Ravens this past week. Granted, the Ravens defense is pretty phenomenal. But they didn't look like they were ready for prime time. The only touchdown that the Houston Texans had in that game was from their special teams unit. That was the biggest game of the year for the Texans. That offense looked flat. So, eh, I don't know, Jim. Uh, Bobby Slug might need to still take some time to be a OC and learn a thing or two. Last on the long shot list, uh, Frank Smith from the Miami Dolphins, uh, their offensive coordinator. Th this would be the ultimate shocker if somehow he ends up being the Seattle Seahawks head coach. He interviewed on January 18th. Doesn't have a second interview lined up at this point. Uh, been the OC with the Dolphins since 2022, but not a play caller. So we don't really know what Smith's abilities are uh, with him not being the guy calling the shots. Mike McDaniel does that for Miami. So I don't know how good of a coach Frank Smith actually is. People say a lot of positive and good things. We've seen the Miami Dolphins offense looks good. 
but we just don't know. And so that uncertainty. Not saying that you have to be a play caller to be a good head coach. I mean, look at Dan Campbell, what he's done with the Detroit Lions. Wasn't a play caller, never was a coordinator, and he's turned out to be one of the best coaches in football. But still worth saying, we don't know a ton about Frank Smith at this point. If you enjoyed today's show, like the video, we'd certainly appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with us for the second time today on Seahawks Today. We'll see you tomorrow.